Let's cast the Stone Coil Serpent off the top. Yeah, let's play this thing. Cast the Tribe Elder. We're crewing it. We've got a snake on a plane. <laughs> Today on Commander Replay, I've had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone. Got an extra fun deck for you today. Today we're playing Snakes on a Plane with Sashiro the Anointed. <laughs> Let's take a look at this opener. I've uh, got one, two, three lands. Uh, Snake Pit is fun. What colors are our command? Oh, Reaper King's all colors. Nice. That's a mono green. Uh, so only one deck will be helping us with the Snake Pit, it looks like. Hmm, not a lot of card advantage. I'm going to take the free mulligan. I think we can do a little better. Genesis Wave is a long ways away. Uh, there's a Nissa's Pilgrimage. That, that's beautiful. Uh, we are a land short of Nissa's Pilgrimage. We're just going to pray that we draw into it. But if, as long as we do that, we'll be in great shape. So go ahead and keep this one. So the genesis of this deck was uh, I was in Discord chat a few days ago with some Patreons chit-chatting about how I'm sick and tired of people trying to blow up my tap creatures in my tap creature tribal deck and I use the meme from Snakes on a Plane. And then I started thinking to myself, I'm like, can you build a Snakes on a Plane deck? And then I'm like, I think you can. So that's what we're doing today. We've got, so we've got snake tribal mixed with vehicles that fly. That is the theme of this deck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm very excited about it. We draw a fog, which is not that land we were hoping on, but still a couple more turns before things become a problem. <laughs> There's a crypto with right for opponent. So this is what you call a meme deck. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at our commander. It's Sashiro the Anointed. Six mana for a 3-4. Other snakes you control get plus two, plus two. And when a snake you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. So decent snake anthem. The body's probably a little bit small for six mana. Uh, in today's day and age, that'd probably be, I mean, being that it's mono green would be like, this card would probably be four mana. And at four mana, this thing would be insane. But if it were still a six mana card in today's world, that'd probably be like, I don't know, a seven, seven, eight, eight with those abilities, something like that. Uh, that's a Lotus Cobra. It's not quite a land, but if we ever find a land after this, things should be good. Does this do? What does this do? Does this do anything good? Uh, look at the top five cards of your library. Reveal a historic card. Now, eh, there are a number of artifacts in the deck, not like a ton but this might help us find them a little faster, which is relevant because Mech Titan Core cares about uh, the number of artifacts you have in play. So it's not amazing synergy for the deck, but it might get us a few extra cards, which would be nice, potentially. Uh, opponent plays Cultivate. I'm jealous. We're, uh, we're praying for that third land to get our Nissa's Pilgrimage going. Uh, opponent plays Wood Elves. Also jealous. Three lands over there. Everyone's got three lands. Uh, opponent does have a Basilisk Collar in play. Pretty good card. Does some silly things. Uh, particularly with a Tago, can machine gun everything down. One, two, ten. <laughs> they also have a Field of the Dead in play, which is a very scary card once they have, uh, what is it, seven lands? Seven lands. Yep, here comes Tago. They're going to scry one off the path of ancestry. Zendikar Resurgent is not a land. That makes me very sad. We don't have the discard yet, but uh, this is going to hurt. This is gonna hurt. I'm cheating on lands just a teeny bit. Uh, I've got 33 lands in the deck. There's at least one flip land, I think, too. Maybe there's only one. Maybe that's the issue. All right, yeah, maybe 34 is a little greedy. Ideally, I thought it was at 35, but looks like I cheated one. Again, just need to find that third land, and this is Pilgrimage. will set us up for a couple turns at least. Uh, even after that, potentially Realm Walker can, like, in theory, we can, like, cast creatures from the top and get to our lands. Theoretically. This thing helps make mana too. This thing is also unfortunately six mana. What will be awkward is that I don't know that we can do a lot on the turn that we Yeah, I don't think there's really I don't think there's really too many fetches in the deck. Explosive vegetation, I'm jealous. Yep. We're gonna be looking at some worms real soon. Uh landfall tago. Yep. Cracks a fetch. That'll be another landfall tago. Yep. Kodama's reach. Once again jealous. By opponents three lands. I'm gonna equip the rock. Yep, it's not great. Does it cost mana to activate? It does. They are fortunately out of mana. Oh, not a land. Not a land. All right. Uh, we're gonna discard the fog because if for some reason we can get a second instant or sorcery into our graveyard, we'll get three lands with this. 
And then in theory, we can get a bunch of stuff back with Seasons Past. But that is all hinged on the fact that, like, at some point, we need to get a land here. Changeling Outcast, Reaper King. Uh, I'd imagine they go after the Basilisk color. Yeah, that's, uh, that definitely needs to happen. Although, given our situation, that probably doesn't come after us for quite a while. But Growth Spasm for opponent, also jealous. Everyone is ramping like crazy, and we are very far behind. Migration Path. d is on nine lands on turn five. Yeah, that's gonna be an issue. It's gonna be an issue. Tago makes a rock. Nightshade Peddler coming in. Gives creatures death touch, and it'll get the same job done. I bet this goes after the Reaper King. <laughs> nice. I was wondering if opponent had another way to do that. Yep, shoots the Reaper King. Reaper King down. Love it. Does it say another creature? Whenever another Scarecrow enters, so... They need Reaper King plus a creature to be able to do the thing. Swift of Boots. Make it much harder to interact with, although... You could probably just shoot this thing. Oh, there's a land. Thank God. All right. We can maybe at some point play some magic. Uh, unfortunately... Yeah, like I said, I don't know that we have a great way to spend the mana that we're going to gain off the Cobra right here, which is unfortunate. Get two forests. Actually, ooh, we might actually. No, because we've already played one. Make another green. Yeah, we have two mana, and unfortunately nothing at two mana. That's annoying, but... Uh, at least we're... have a chance of playing Magic now. Realm Walker is probably our next best bet just to, like, try to get things out of the way to get to lands. Uh, or... We could literally Seasons Pass to get back Nissa's Pilgrimage is not... Oh my god, that's a Boundless Realms. Opponent's gonna have all the mana. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, we'd be able to get to Zendikar Resurgent next turn, but there just aren't a lot of cards in the deck that'll allow us to do that. Soul Ring is one. I don't know if there are any others. Yep, yeah, opponent doubles up their lands. They have many. Luckily, they're down to two cards. So we're probably in, like, okay shape until they find the card draw. Once they do that, though, they'll be off to the races. Taking a look at our opponents, by the way. First up is Cadus piloting the Reaper King, and looks like he's doing a Changeling Tribal thing over there, so whenever another Scarecrow enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. Yeah, it's pretty good. I've been got by the Reaper King a number of times over the years, but it's also a commander that's pretty easy to interact with, being that it's a creature and an artifact, so a lot of different types of removal will hit the Reaper King and prevent disaster, but if you leave it in play... It can cause problems. Uh, Bookworm coming in for opponent is a 7-7 seven, seven worm. They gain three life and draw a card. And they can put it from their graveyard on top of... Third from top on their library. Very interesting. Ictekic, Salvage Splicer coming in. Yep. Seems good with all the rocks. Uh, in the middle, by the way, is D-Manny piloting Baru Worm Speaker. I think he said this is his budget version of the deck. He's played it twice on the channel so far. Not great showings for it as of yet, but... Uh, four mana, three, three, and gives your worms plus two, plus two in trample, which is a really solid tribal commander anthem. Uh, and you can pay eight mana to create a four, four worm, costs less X to activate, where X is the greatest power among worms you control. So very quickly, that ability will probably become a single green mana. There is another forest. Okay. Okay. We've, we've got hope. We've got hope. Play the forest. That means we can get to Zendikar Resurgent next turn if our Lotus Cobra sticks. I'm going to go for the Realm Walker right here. I've been thinking about what I want to do, but... Uh, again, I think we want to try to get, like, bad creatures out of the way. Uh, that's a Nurse's Incubator. That's actually pretty helpful. Choosing a snake. Also, the I'm going with the value of information right there. Information is very helpful. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really cast anything else. Yeah, it's maybe a little unfortunate, but... Yeah, that's what, that is what it is. Pass like that. Uh, Urza's Incubator should help us out quite a bit, though. If we can get, like, one or two... Let's see. So we play a land, get a mana, cast the Incubator. Then we pay one, two, get this thing. Yeah, we should be able to get some things done next turn. There's the card draw I was talking about. Uh, that will be a pain. Hopefully someone's got removal for the for that Rhystic Study. Because what you don't want them to do is refill their hand. Yeah, maybe it just makes sense to go for the Zendikar Resurgent. Yeah, try, I think we'll try the Zendikar Resurgent, because if no one shoots the Rhystic Study, then we can assume they probably don't have Artifact or Enchantment removal. Uh, unfortunately, it's turn 7, and we're still, like, several turns away from where we want to be. I did tell opponents this would be probably about a turn 9 to 10 deck, but I would say that we're even behind schedule from that, based on the start that we had. Now, if we slam Zendikar Resurgent, and if we untap with it, uh, that will give us a decent turn right there, and then the turn after that, we'd be in, like, okay shape, but that also depends on 
what opponents can do during that time. Two turns down the road from turn seven is like a very long time within the game. Uh, as much as I don't want to lose the Lotus Cobra, someone dropping a bunch of board wipes would probably be very helpful. Uh, D-Man is hesitating on this trigger, which tells me uh, he's probably trying to wheel and deal. Uh-oh. So d Manny didn't pay for the Ristic Study because he was going to draw seven, so it seemed fair that he was going to draw one. But uh, Flintlock's got other plans and is going to shoot the worm with the Death Touch. And that's that's a two for one is what that is. Unless he's got a protection spell right here, which I would probably use if I had. Like, there's enough riding on this moment that, you know, if he has a heroic intervention, I would cast it. Because drawing seven is a lot of cards. I guess there's that. I guess the, the Tago deck can kind of keep things in check a little bit. People will need to jump through those hoops. But, you know, as long as it doesn't, like, come in our direction, we should be, like, okay-ish. But uh, Reaper King didn't really play a creature on their turn. Uh, I will say that, uh, and this is Flintlock piloting Tago with Iktekic, by the way, and doing this whole uh, Death Touch throw rocks thing, make make big golems uh, thing. There's a Palaka Worm, fun card. I did have a Worm Tribal deck with uh, Goreclaw back in the day, and uh, it's a fun little deck. Although you do notice there are a lot of worms that don't have, what's the what's the power you need on Goreclaw? Is it four? I think it's four. There's a few that get like, it's a 3-3, three, three, but it comes in with a bunch of plus one, plus one counters or something like that. Uh, there's a few of those that get a little awkward with it, but eh, what can you do? There's a Cultivate. Uh, let's opponent draw. A landfall rock, yep. Yeah. Equips a rock. Rush monster. First strike, sacrifice an artifact. It gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Okay. Okay. It's maybe not amazing, but it's a cute little synergy. That's for sure. You know, sacrificing, sacrificing an artifact is kind of a big deal. Now, I guess if there's a bunch of treasures running around, maybe slightly less so, but... Yeah, you can put a hilarious amount of power on it. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I've ever heard of, but... 4-4 four, four over to Cadus. Yep. Uh, Urza's Incubator. There's an Orakai Ranger on top. Yeah, you know, I'd love to get that out of the way, but uh, unfortunately. So we're going to play the land, uh, make a little mana with the Lotus Cobra. No one shot the Ristic Study, so... Assumingly, two players don't have Artifact and Enchantment Removal. The Reaper King, unfortunately, has it in the Command Zone, but I, I do feel like they're going to try to deal with the Tago Death Touch problem before they deal with us, so... I'm hoping that we get at least one turn to use the Zendikar Resurgent. Uh, opponent will get the draw. Can't do much about it. We'll continue to stay put. <laughs> no reason for us to go anywhere. No need to stir the pot. We are very far behind. Yeah, so Cadus has eight cards and a lot of mana now, so I think we're going to start seeing some action from him. Luckily, the Reaper King costs, what, is that going to be seven? So that will eat up quite a bit of chunk of mana. I, I guess that they can probably cast about two cards after they cast Reaper King, unless any of them are, like, especially cheap. Maybe they get the three. Is it cast or an ETB? It's an ETB, which means that opponent could shoot it while it's on the stack, which uh, I'm sure they wouldn't be thrilled about. Here comes the Reaper King. Uh, protection spell could get them through it, though. though. Uh, each creature has protection from its colors. This is a silly card. Earnest Fellowship. This does some weird things. That protects... Uh, who does the damage, the rock or the creature? It has to be the creature. That's the only way Death Touch works, right? This creature deals two damage, so the Nightshade Peddler couldn't shoot our... Oh, you should have played this first, actually. Yeah, that's a... Uh, he definitely missequenced that. That's a pretty big play, too. If he plays this first, then he can't shoot the Reaper King because it's five colors. That's actually hilarious in a five-color deck. So opponent's going to try to do the thing. There's an... Oh, that's an Ephemerate. Okay. So getting himself out of it, but he could have saved his Ephemerate if he played the Earnest Fellowship first. Uh, this is what we need, though. We need opponents to kind of, like, battle each other out for a little while while we try to climb back into this thing. So this is all good news for us. And there's a lot of green at the table, so, like, pro green for us is, like, pretty helpful. Haven't seen this card a lot, but the two or three times that I've seen it have caused some weird game states. There's a Mystic Remora, also good. He's got all of the OP blue draw over there. Yep, yep. And a lot of mana to pay for that upkeep for quite a while. Casting non-creature spells. Well, it's a pretty bad idea. Even casting regular spells. Yeah, opponent's going to poke us with this thing. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> we could block with the 2-3, but... Uh, oh, it has protection. Yeah, no. Not even worried about it. We'll take the 2. So now there's a really big need for artifact and enchantment removal. There's a little bit in this deck. I probably need to add one more card's worth of it, to be completely honest. See what D-Man has got. Got 10 mana. Seems good. 
Impervious Great Worm, indestructible, 1616, no big deal. <laughs> uh, you want to know it's great against people that are throwing rocks with death touch? An impervious Great Worm. <laughs> Uh, he said, no, he doesn't run Painter Servant with the uh, Ernest Fellowship. 7-7, seven, seven, over to Flintlock. Yeah. Doesn't it have... Oh, it does have Trample. Okay. So he'll get a little bit through. Tries to block... That doesn't seem like it's working correctly. Protection from green... Oh, right, yeah, no. You Opposite colors can block. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know, he does got to be a little careful. <laughs> uh, start sacrificing artifacts. Counter on the Iktakik, and this thing gets plus two, plus O. Oh. What's he sacrificing? Oh, this can sacrifice the artifacts themselves. Yeah, okay. Maybe this is a little better than I thought. It's kind of a nasty little blocker. <laughs> uh, got him. <laughs> got him. Uh, it dies. He draws a card. There may be a Great Worm going in his direction next turn. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. This deck is uh, dangerously low on creature removal, so probably going to have to uh, look to opponents to be able to really do something about uh, the problems on board. I will say that this might be a little bit awkward. So you can destroy non-creature permanents easily, but if you want to destroy a creature, uh, theoretically, almost every creature in play is going to have protection from Reaper King, unless it's colorless. Nico Tay. Quip creature deals damage to a creature. Tap that creature. Doesn't untap uh, for as long as it remains on the battlefield. There you go. That's not terrible for Ashling. In the event that something survives the Ashling explosion, it would stay tapped as long as the Nico T stays on the battlefield. When a quick creature deals damage to a player, that player loses one life. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's like it's not amazing. Just another instance of Death Touch would be just better, but you could make it work. You can, you can see the case to make it work. Gorgon Flail, more Death Touch. At least that's probably in the sights of the Reaper King. You know what an opponent could do? If they could blink this thing somehow, no. What they can do is put Death Touch on a colorless creature, and then put a rock on a colorless creature, and then shoot the Reaper King. Yeah, that actually works. We'll see if they see it. That's like a... That's a fairly complex line of play. I'm curious to see if they're on top of it or not. Like I said, this thing just causes weird board states. <laughs> if you're not used to playing against it, then uh, it can get you. It can get you. Oh, he sees it. He sees it. Nice. Equips a rock. I did think about putting Steely Resolve in the deck, which would be, like, pretty helpful against what's going on. So now he's got colorless damage, and, like, colorless damage is surprisingly good because a lot, there's a lot of protection from color stuff that tends to show up now. Like, a Chroma's Will is a really big one. There's a handful of others that run around, too. And, you know, I'm not saying that, like, you go way out of your way for it, but if for some reason you can get colorless damage into your deck without giving up too much... Uh, it is a helpful thing that gets you around some problematic situations, like this one. Ghost Flame is a card I'm thinking of, like, and you wouldn't just, like, run Ghost Flame naturally, um, unless your meta has devolved into some weird point where you're like, you know what, I just need to main deck a Ghost Flame. Um, and, and if that's the case, that's, that's, that's fine, that's great, but, uh, under normal circumstances, yeah, you're like, you're not gonna go out of your way for colorless damage, but when you can find it, it's helpful. Walking Ballista is probably one of the biggest killers as far as colorless damage goes. Uh, I guess Triskelion also. Uh, there's a Stone Coil Serpent on top, so we can cast some creatures this turn, which I'm very excited about. Let's start with the Urza's Incubator. Oh, our lands make double. And we're also going to pray that we draw into a land at some point here. Uh, Mystic Remora, oh god, they're going to draw so many cards. Um, not paying. The saving grace that, like, you know, they'll probably shoot the Reaper King. They're leaf blowing outside right now. It's not great. Sorry if that sound's coming through. Choosing Snake. Let's cast the Stone Coil Serpent off the top. How much mana do we put into it? Uh, things are pretty big. I think just a little bit's fine. We've got X3 right now. Uh, actually, I don't know that the difference between 3 and 4 really does much here, so... Let's save the mana. X is currently 2. 3 seems fine. There's a Farseek. Farseek is... Decent. Not paying. One's gonna have so many cards. This is one of those situations where, like, okay, there's a lot of ways that this could backfire, but uh, they're going to draw so many cards that we make them the threat, and then everyone has to kind of deal with them, which, again, keeps the heat off of us for a moment. Farseek in a land is great with the Cobra. Stone Coil Serpent in. Uh, let's play this Orakai Ranger. Actually, maybe we play this thing? Yeah, let's play this thing. It's me, Snakes. 
I got the stuff. God's Endicar Resurgent is wild. We've been having a terrible game up to this point, and really the only thing giving us any hope is Endicar Resurgent, and like Urza's Incubator and Lotus Cobra also make mana, so those are helping now too, but is Endicar Resurgent really doing the heavy lifting here? There's a land that we badly need, a Sakura Tribe Elder on top. Play the land, get a mana, make a green, cast the Tribe Elder from the top. All the stuff triggers. We draw another card. This time it'll be a Prowling Serpapod. Well, it's up to 15 cards in hand. No big deal. Uh, there's Sasaya Orakai Ascendant. There's a silly card. If you have seven or more lands, uh, I could probably cut that one from the deck, actually. We're a long ways away from that being good. Nor do we really need that card, so I'm actually going to crack the Tribe Elder right here and just shuffle. Get a forest. Castle Garabrig on top. That's a helpful land, actually. Make a green. Ooh, it means I don't really want to far... Uh, we can cast this thing first and then far seek. Cast this thing. There's a weather light completed. Nice. So let's play the Serpapod, I guess, so we can draw the weather light completed. There's a Smuggler's Copter. Also nice. So we've got some snakes now. Now we're going to get a plane. Let's get this plane in. Kind of want the Smuggler's Copter too, honestly, but... Uh, at the very least, we have blockers now, which is good. Still, like, a ways away from really being, like, a threat. Especially with the now 19 cards in Cadus' hand. And then we play a Farseek. Oh, wait. Uh-oh. I foresee a problem. I foresee... A oh, no. <laughs> that's that's the second time I've done that. That is the mono green Farseek. Hey, Sphinx, check this out. Homeboy got Snake on the license plate. Well, Snake will have to slit his ass all the way to the bus stop in the morning. Um, yeah, Mono Green Farseek does not work. Uh, that needs to become a three visits or something like that. That's unfortunate. This can attack. Yeah, I mean, we should probably attack Cadus a little bit just because he has a million cards in hand. So we'll cut down. We're not going to be like the killer per se, but we can cut down the distance for our opponents a little bit who now have a giant headache to deal with. So I imported this deck list from I just found a random Sashiro deck. Uh, online and then imported that and then made a bunch of changes to my liking and obviously added all the vehicle stuff that wasn't in there. So, you know, uh, I did not catch that they were running Farseek in their mono green deck. Uh, we do get four. Oh no. Oh no. We get four green mana that we can't. I have six or, uh, ah, uh, go back, go back. Crap. Well, that mana would have been helpful. Could have got more stuff in, although, uh, we've probably done enough damage with, uh, <laughs> with what's going on. Uh, here comes the Ephemerate Rebound. Interestingly, it can't target the Reaper. Uh, I can target the other thing, though. It's gonna blink the thing. Yep. Uh, Reaper King trigger. What are we going after? Gonna shoot our Zendikar Resurgent. That's unfortunate. At least we got a turn with it. We're, like, kind of in the game a little bit now. Uh, theoretically, we can get it back with Seasons Past. Legendary Snakes you control have Shroud. Doesn't seem like a bad place to be. There's one. We have one Legendary Snake, and we'll have two when we cast our Commander. Unsettled Mariner coming in. There's a Changeling. Opponent's going to attempt to shoot the Reaper King here. So I actually think that they probably should have shot it at the at our end step because with 20 cards especially, there's a good chance that they have a protection spell. I've run into this situation before where like just because you can do something at instant speed, there are times where if you're anticipating your opponent to have interaction that you should just do it while they're... Yep, there you go. Yep, that's... Uh, uh, we probably just die now. Reaper King has a lot of mana and a lot of cards, so, like, probably just everything on board dies. Gonna shoot the Gorgon Flail. Yep. Soul Ring. A regular cohort. Reaper King. Targeting the Swiftfoot Boots. Yep. Uh, two Reaper King triggers. Not ideal. Oh, yeah, what's weird is, like, he can't target creatures, so we're gonna start losing. Like, we need Urza's Incubator to stick. He goes after the Neko T. Neko Tay. Iktekic pumps stuff up. He can't shoot this thing, though. Colorless doesn't have protection from any colors. Uh, ours does, though. Protection from multicolored. Super helpful. Civic Saber. Oh, yeah. That has protection from all colors. Yeah, I mean, that'll kill you. Always funny with a five-color commander. Civic Saber. Equips the Civic Saber. I'll tell you what, though, that's better than them just, like, casting more changelings. Uh, problem now is that they're probably sitting on interaction of some sort. See a lot of open blue mana. One with the machine. Draw cards equal to the highest mana. Ugh. I mean, I guess they already have so many cards that, like... They go up to 25 cards. Three mana left. As far as I can tell, they still have a max hand size, so, like, I don't actually know that that's the card that they should have went with right there, because assumingly they have something else that matters more than that does. Uh, three mana is Teferi's protection mana, which is not good. The thing you want to do right here, actually, is if someone has it, is play a Wheel of Fortune, because then you make them discard all the cards that they've been hoarding in their hand. They're going to swing over to D-Manny. D-Manny's got 50 life, so... Yeah, I guess that makes sense. D-Manny can also... Uh, it doesn't have Trample yet, but it shouldn't be too hard to find it. 
Oh, this Grand's Trample, yeah. So you cast this, and then just swing into Cadus, and that will be a big chunk of his life. d Manny takes 11 Commander, goes to 39. He can block with he can block with some stuff, but he'd have to give up like all of his creatures to do it. Yeah, Cadus has to discard. Can sculpt the perfect seven, but gotta worry about the Teferi's protection. Discards, Chromatic Orrery, Gilded Lotus, Baral's Expertise, a lot of lands. Lightning Greaves, Lepcrafter's Beast Jerry. I know he pays the one. Yeah, we should probably get into the uh, habit of paying for the one. He let the Mystic Remora go, which is good. Here comes Baru. Great Worm's gonna get Trample. He draws a card. Big attack into Cadus. Find out if he's got Teferi's protection. Uh, he's lining up blocks, so he might not have it. Yeah, throwing everything under the bus. Throws two under the bus. That's still... That leaves him wide open to the rest of us. Goes down to 11, loses two creatures. Has only two blockers left. So Flintlock could potentially finish him off. And that would ease the burden on the board state quite a bit. Gala Greeters. Makes counter... Uh, puts counters on things, creates treasures, and gains life. All solid. Champion of the Flame. Yep. Gets the scry. Uh, Deadly Recluse is a reach death touch creature. Puts a counter on the Gala Greeters. Uh, sends two over to Cadus. He can block both of them, though. He'll be out of blockers when it comes to our turn, which is helpful. But Only blocks one and goes down to one life. Huh. I would have blocked both. I don't know if he's got something. I feel like if he's got something, though, we would have seen it already. Because there's, you know, there's been a lot of opportunities to play interaction up to this point. Uh, command Tower on top. Let's play the Castle Garenbrig. Lotus Cobra will make a mana. Ideally, I want to cast Seasons Past this turn to make sure we have a Fog on hand, because creature combat is how we're going to lose. But the greedy line is getting Sashiro in. Make a green. Uh, activate the Garenbrig. and get six mana for creatures. Cast our commander, Ristic Study. God, would I love to pay for that, but uh, the mana. Uh, maybe we should pay. Let's just pay. Make sure he doesn't catch Teferis off the top. We would have seen the Teferis if he had it already. Uh, get this thing into play. Give our legendary snake shroud so they don't get shot. Another thingy. Paying for that one. Go to combat. I'm going to leave one additional creature back, I think. <laughs> he said he was not a threat at all. I don't know if that's sarcasm or what, but... Uh, down he goes. We overkilled him a little bit. Put him at negative 21, but we do get to draw a lot of cards and make a lot of mana out of the situation, which I like. Well, that's good news. Snakes on crack. <laughs> and now they have to deal with us getting a ton of mana. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's still just snakes at the end of the day. <laughs> snakes and planes. That's all the deck is. So, you know, not exactly just running away with it here, but decent opportunity now. Ooh, 13 mana is a lot. 13 mana is definitely a lot. What does this say? Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage player, add that much green. Oh, wow. That's 22 green mana. That is uh, actually a lot of mana. I misread that card. <laughs> Thought it would be much different. Thought it would just be one per creature. Nope. It is a lot more than that. Uh, turns out that's pretty good. What's the name of that thing again? Where is it? Sakiko Mother of Summer. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. We commence the card draw. There's Unnatural Growth. That's a fun card. Force of Vigor finally showing up, although most of the artifact enchantment problems are dead now. A lot of them were uh, on Cadus's board. 22 green mana. Are there any artifacts and enchantments that we care about? That one's okay, but start with the weather light. Might actually get to crew a vehicle this game. Uh, unnatural growth. Uh, this sniper thing. Matsu tribe sniper. Matsu tribe, whatever this thing is. Seasons passed. Oh, uh, maybe we should have went seasons past Endicar Resurgent. Yeah, that would have been smarter. Although, I think we're doing okay. Get Fog, get Nissa's Pilgrimage, get Tribe Elder, and get Zendikar Resurgent. God, this card is so good. Play, Zendik uh, play Nissa's Pilgrimage. Get some forests. One in the play tapped. Coat of Arms is on top. That's a good one. Uh, might not crack our Tribe Elder just yet then. That being the case. Oh, we get an extra mana. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, play the Tribe Elder. That Coat of Arms is looking pretty funny, so I think we'll just leave it right there. Um, I feel good about where we're at. We'll just pass like that. Wilt. Uh, gonna destroy our unnatural growth? Oh. Never get to use that thing. Man, it's each combat? Ugh. Really wish they didn't print that in green. Probably not that it matters all that much. I mean, I mean it kind of does, right? Like, as good as overrun effects are, they don't happen during your opponent's turn. So, like, with that in play, like, now it's just like, oh, you can't attack into the player either because their stuff's huge. Doesn't seem like it should have been a green card, but... That's just me. It would have been a cool red card, honestly. Red could use that help. And also, you know, there's some, like, weird red creatures with lopsided power, like Thunderblust and stuff that, you know, it's got seven power, now it's got 14. Yeah. Conifer Worm coming in. 
See what flintlock drew, it's a land. So, I mean, I think that makes his plan just swing into us as hard as he can. Uh, we've got a few things we need to block. Puts a rock, oh, on the death touch thing, yeah, our stuff's gonna start getting shot down. Which is not ideal. If he only has one rock, we could theoretically force a vigor of the rock. But we'd have to discard a green card to do it, which I don't want to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's one rock, it'll be annoying, and it'll probably, probably get the mana creature. It'll either go after the mana or the card draw. Uh, actually, they're both, uh, no, he's got to start with the, sh the one that gives them Shroud first. Where is that one? Here it is. Kashi Tribe Elite. Legendary Snakes have Shroud. It is not legendary itself, though. Yep, gonna start with that one. Tribe Elite goes down. Finally get a counter on Weather Light completed. Need a bunch more for it to, uh, do the thing, though. We get to scry one. I'll just leave that right there. Attacks with two big creatures, I think I'm just gonna block. Block one there... And we'll block one there, and then both of these won't untap. What do we need on this thing? Four or more. You know what? We could have double blocked. Uh, we can crack the tribe elders, what we can do. Yeah, there we go. We've got a plan. Gonna get some vehicle action in this game. Uh, Weather Light Completed gets two things on it. They both get the don't untap trigger. Keep the coat of arms right there. Yeah, let's bring it back to our turn. <laughs> this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Uh, Bonders Enclave on top. Let's play a forest. Lotus Cobra. Mick Green. Uh, use crew the weather light with the Sakura tribe elder. We're crewing it. We've got a snake on a plane. <laughs> uh, then we'll sacrifice the tribe elder to put uh, a fourth counter on weather light completed. Put the land on the bottom. Sky sovereign on top. Nice. Another plane. Uh, I don't think we can draw it though. At least not pre-combat. Oh, we're going to shuffle anyway. Get a forest. Make another Lotus Cobra trigger. Surprisingly, Lotus Cobra survived all game. No board wipes this game, so, you know, any board wipe would have cleaned that up. But uh, having to deal with the Tago thing and the Reaper King thing back and forth kept our creatures out of the line of fire, which I can appreciate. Uh, play this Coat of Arms. This should do it. Uh, Flintlock's still at... I mean, they're both still at 40, basically. So maybe not. Probably gonna have to survive a turn. We can probably kill one. Yeah, D-Man has got a lot of blockers. Yeah, that is a thing. Um, go to combat. You need to get four of them through. And he can block three. Yeah. Uh, I guess just send them all... Send them all at Flintlock. And pull back the Lotus Cobra. Jesus, that one's a 24-25. Oh my. Who else are we blocking with? Yeah, I think the rest of them gotta go in. We did it, though. We attacked with our snakes and our planes. This is an 8-8. Wow. Blocks the big one. Blocks the mana one. Should probably try to kill the mana one. The mana one... What's going to put us over the top here? Oh, there he goes. Uh, he's going to use the Recluse on the uh, Realm Walker. The Realm Walker is giant. Okay, yeah, so he's going to block with all available blockers. Curious to see how much damage actually goes through. I don't know if this is lethal or not. Uh-oh, D-Man has got something. Uh, he's going to Beast Within... Ooh, the card draw one. Oh, we kind of want that one, don't we? Yeah, okay. I was hoping to get that Growing Rights of Itlamok, because now what happens is it's hard for us to rebuild. Uh, maybe not as bad. Okay. Uh, Sashiro back to the command zone. We get another counter on Weatherlight Complete. We might get to draw a card off that, which would be helpful. I'd love to get this Growing Rights in. Leave that right there. Flintlock probably... Yeah, Flintlock only goes down to 20. He loses a ton of his creatures. But we're actually not in the best spot now because we're mostly tapped out. And, uh... We don't have, like, a lot of blockers. We have the Fog, which stops one player from killing us. But, you know, that's a one-trick pony right there. Oh, the Realm Walker went down, too. We do get a crap ton of mana. So depending on how we hit right here. Uh, yeah, keep this on top with the scry. Uh, I should have put that weather light trigger on top first. Oh, this is going to be the card draw. Yeah, okay. So we draw the growing rights, which I love. Uh, we then get this snake off something. I have no idea. And the creature doesn't untap. That's good. Oh, two of those don't untap. Actually, we're probably, we might be okay then. Uh, weather light. See if we can hit another vehicle. Uh, what we get? You may choose a card to put in our hand. We got... The Harvester, which is lifelink, Copter, which is looting, and this thing seems very good. This is that touch. Uh, let's go for this thing, even though the thematically we should go for the other two. We are in sort of the high stakes moment where there is an indestructible 2020 trample on the board, so we're going to need to uh, figure out some things for that. Play the Growing Rights of Itlamok. Actually, before we do that, get the Zendikar Resurgent, then play the Growing Rights of Itlamok. That Mana Snake, honestly, he probably should have shot the Mana Snake. The Mana Snake is insane. Growing Rights Trigger, we get to look at the top. Uh, no creature cards. Okie dokie. Ouch. Any order. Um, play this thing. There's a Soul Ring. Cast a Soul Ring. Cast the Hex Drinker. Draw a card. Uh, Forest is not what we wanted. Do we have any tricks remaining? I don't think we do. 
So we level up the Hex Drinker. What do we need to get to? Eight? Jesus. Oh, right, you can only do it at sorcery speed. Oh, God. This is going to take forever. <laughs> and we've leveled our Hex Drinker all the way up to a 9-9. Protection from everything. Beautiful. Uh, we're completely out of tricks. So I guess we pass like that. Get ready for the Worm Onslaught. Uh, we flip into Illamok Cradle of the Sun. Love the art. Love the look on all these flip lands. Just home runs. Home runs on these cards. This one's probably like a little strong. It's not as bad as Gaia's Cradle. Like this is a fair card compared to Gaia's Cradle. But, uh, you know, can still take over late in the game. That's for sure. Lots of extra mana. Usually a problem. Really wish the white one was a lot better. Holy crap. That thing is just tough. Just not doesn't do enough. Like making one ones. It's not that good. If the white one said, like, I don't know, pay one or two and gain four life, that would be, like, an upgrade. Uh, Sir Rock the Hunt Caller, yeah, gives stuff haste. If I told you there was a four-mana legendary creature that gives other creatures haste, what color would you assume it is? Is green the first color you're thinking of? You were probably thinking red. If you were thinking red, you'd be wrong. If you can tell, I'm not at all annoyed by the fact that green gets haste way more than it should. Yep, give a, give a big worm trample. Give a big worm trample. Here comes the Great Worm. Yeah, he's sending, looks like, just about all available. Yeah, all available attackers, except the Wood Elves. Changing his mind. Probably starting to think about that Hex Drinker a little bit. I do want to build the level up deck. It's a thing that I want to do. Uh, he's going to send three our way. Yeah, this is, um, I think it's lethal if we don't do anything about it. So, is it worth killing one and taking a crap ton of damage? Probably not. I think he just, I think we just fog. Use the fog, pray that the uh, Seasons Pass shows up again and we can get the fog back. <laughs> I think that's where we're at. <laughs> it's theoretically possible if we hit enough creatures with Zendikar Resurgent and draw enough cards. Uh, also, if we get a hit with our commander off, it's possible. Uh, the big thing is that uh, Flintlock's two big creatures don't untap this turn, which is super helpful for us. So I don't think Flintlock is going to be able to one-shot us from where he's at. He might be able to wipe our board, and that would certainly be a thing. Uh, if that happened, we die to the Great Worm very quickly. Tago back to play. Scry's one. Oh, the worms all pump each other up, don't they? Okay, there's a line of play where at some point we may need to force a vigor our own coat of arms, uh, to survive a worm attack. That's a thing that could happen. I'll tell you what, this card is a nightmare to play in paper. Playing this on Magic Online is beautiful because it tracks all the power and toughnesses for you automatically. God, trying to figure out the size of anything with, with this in paper is horrendous. Here's a Gadrock. Okay. Little flying action. I think we uh, gave up all of our reach snakes in the last combat. Interestingly, opponent did not soul bond their Tago. Uh, if any of our creatures die, we will draw with Weatherlight completed, which is helpful. Could use a couple snakes off the top here. Try to get the team pumped up a little bit. With three blockers, though, if we don't find Trample, d Mandy probably survives, and that Great Worm is really going to put a hurting on us. Uh, you know what, though? We have our... Uh, Card draw. Ooh, Harmonize is a good place to be. Cast, Harmonize. Do need to hit some creatures. Uh, we hit an Anthem. We did not hit creatures, though. Um, let's play the Reliquary Tower. That could be relevant. Uh, we get a Landfall thing. Play the Obelisk. Choosing Snake. Should double-check all the wording on this. Uh, gives them plus two, plus two. That's it. Making sure there's no other abilities on that. Crew this thing with this 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I think we just send it all a D-Manny and hope for the best. God, we're going to lose stuff, though. I mean, I guess so will he. I don't think we have any choices in the matter. Send it all. Yeah, that Harmonize didn't plan out, pan out the way I was hoping. Like, one creature in there gets us, should theoretically get us going, but it didn't happen that way. What's d man he got? Uh, return non-legendary. Oh, God. Beast within. Eek. Uh, something's going to get shot. Probably our card draw one, which we badly need. Here comes the Beast within at the Coat of Arms. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, no idea what this will do to the combat math. Trigger Zik Uh, it kind of makes our creatures, yeah, yeah. It means, it means he probably won't die, is what it means. Better that than shooting our, uh, card draw guy, though. He is in play, right? Too much stuff to keep track of. No, he's in the, oh god, I never recast him? When did I never, oh man, I thought I recast him. Well, that's not good. That's, uh, that's probably game losing, actually. I thought I recast this already. I can completely forgot that I didn't. Well then. There's the punt of the century. We can cast the second main phase, but that's going to lose so much value. We're just not going to draw with any of this. I guess we'll draw a little bit off the thingy. Weather like completed on the bottom, I guess. Uh, there's some snakes. Legendary snakes. Yeah, let's get uh, Sasuke. 
Uh, there's an ambush viper. Ambush viper is funny. Now we got to deal with the great worm, though. Uh, we do have three creatures, though, so that does get us some things we can do here. Uh, Sashiro into play. We draw another snake. Play another snake. Uh, with the coat of arms down now, now the problem is that we have, like, it's going to be tough to block that thing. What's this one? Sacrifice a snake. Deals combat damage where that player skips their next untap step. That one's nasty. It's probably going to get thrown under a bus here in a minute, though. Lurking Predators is a sweet card. Love to get that in. Uh, get Sasuke. Snakeskin Veil. Target creature, 1-1 one, one and Hexproof. Could be helpful. Uh, we'll play the Ambush Viper, even though it's going to lose the surprise effect. Just because we can draw more cards. There's Beast Within. Uh, Beast Within could help. Doesn't help with the, the Great Worm, but could help with other stuff. How much mana are we getting off this thing? 15! Oh my god. Uh, let's get the Lurking... Yeah, let's just get, yeah, let's just cast Lurking Predators. Use that. We're kind of out of tricks, so... Yeah, this game brought to you by Zendikar Resurgent. Holy crap, this thing is strong. Yeah, we'll just sit on our mana. We have enough blockers now that, like, we can theoretically survive. So we still got quite a bit done that turn, even though uh, I punted super hard with our commander not being in play. Uh, that would have been... I don't know that it would have killed him. It would have put him, like, really low, like, probably low single digits. But we would have drawn, you know, five more cards. Probably, if there's any creatures in there, again, we can cast all of it. Because uh, we have just insane amounts of mana now. Uh, you know, I kind of hope we run into Kindred Discovery, just because then we'll have every snake in the deck. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. It's a hard thing to pull off. Lurking Predators is nice, too, because it gives us a scry, so we can kind of set up what we want to draw with, like, Weatherlight Completed or uh, the other one. The other Weatherlight. Snakes on the Weatherlight. Uh, d Manny's looking for a way out. Trying to team up with Flintlock. Yeah. We've become the threat. Late in the game here. Elder Scale Worm. That'll trigger the Lurking Predators. It's a Nautiloid ship. Oh, Yeah, I'm just gonna try to get more snakes. Put it to the bottom. Uh, Greater Good is a problematic card. Cultivate to the bottom. Now he can draw out. He's out of mana. But it's maybe probably not a problem for this turn specifically, but... Next turn, if he untaps, he can just have every card in his deck. Uh, here comes a Great Worm in our direction. Yup. Uh, we're gonna block with some stuff. Uh, we can get rid of this one. I think Ambush Viper... Uh, Ambush Viper trades favorably with stuff. You know, we have enough mana that we can recast our commander, so I think I'm just gonna do that. Throw the commander in there. How much is that? That's 12. Yeah, we'll just take the rest. Two more creatures die. Weather like completed. Not bad. <laughs> Drawn some cards with it. Uh, there's a snake pit. Vital Splicer. Regenerates golems. Yeah, that's a thing. Lurking Predators. Uh, War Room to the bottom. Uh, there's about 25 creatures in the deck, so I'm actually pretty sure we're probably running pretty low at this point. <laughs> Good number of them in play. There's gotta be some, number, yeah, a decent number in the graveyard. Probably not too, too many left in the deck. You know, Lurking Predators is never as great as I want it to be. I think you really need to be on, like, probably, like, a 35 or 40 creature count deck for this thing to really be effective. I've tried to run it in the 25 to 30 creature count decks quite a bit, and it just seems to whiff a lot on those creature counts, so... Now, it's still a ton of free value. Like, if you mana vault this thing into play early, it is a nightmare for your opponents. Yep, here comes the Onslaught. Would love to get that fog back. Feel a whole lot better with a fog. Uh, somehow Ambush Viper survived. Hmm. Got a 12-12 and a 14-14. Uh, we're gonna block with two, get rid of the Ambush Viper. Well, this thing is cool, but, uh, we just need blockers right now. I like this thing just because it exactly crews the, um the weather light here without giving up too much damage from one of our bigger snakes so this actually generates no value for us in this moment generates a golem yep probably could have did that the other way oh there is a second uh there's a second destroy trigger though that's helpful survives that though hmm. or does it happen oh i think that i think it's a delayed trigger happens at end of combat something like that moss war bridge Orin viper has a snake we draw land um play the moss war bridge landfall hideaway Lotus Cobra. Still kicking around. Turn 12. <laughs> Not bad. Um, Masquid Nexus is funny because it turns our uh, these things into snakes. But I think Heroic Intervention is the safe play here. Going to be tough to get back to that Masquid Nexus. Uh, here we go. Starting another long turn, which, are, which I'm sure our opponents are going to be thrilled about. Cast our commander. Draw a card. There's the Kindred Summons. Uh, that should actually do it. <laughs> oh wait, Coat of Arms is gone. Uh, without Coat of Arms might be... Still gonna be funny. We're still gonna have to do it. Uh, I've always, <laughs> always wanted to use the thing. Uh, let's actually do it with this. Oh, get our Frostfang first. Here's a Heart of Kieran. 
Cast Kindred Summons, get the remaining snakes in our deck. Choosing snake. <laughs> we have many snakes in play now. Target creature blocks. It doesn't have haste, sadly. Oh, that's an Oren Frostfang. Uh, that could get us killed, actually, with the mill. Might actually be able to flip that. Uh, we're already hamming it a lot, though, so probably won't. And I guess we just cast the Heart of Kirin. Uh, there is a world in which I beast within our Oren Frostfang so we don't die. Is Sashiro a May? Where is Sashiro at? You may draw. Okay, so Sashiro is a May, which is important. Let's go to combat. Oh, I forgot to crew the thing. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Maybe I can catch it. Nope, didn't catch it. Well, we're probably gonna need some blockers, so. Everything in the D-Manny, I still don't actually know if this is lethal. Uh, I think it is, because he can't block... Yeah, he can't block the Hex Drinker. Which should get us there. Uh, yep, he's gonna do the greater good thing. If he runs Obscuring Haze, that'd be a problem. If he did, he could, like, theoretically find it by sacrificing his board. Wait, did he just survive? Oh, God. Did the Weatherlight not get through? That should have got through, and Hex Drinker should have got through, which should be lethal. I don't understand. Hmm. First thing we need to do is go always no on the Sashiro ability. <laughs> There's the Masquid Nexus. That's a sorcery. Mech Titan Core. Uh, cast the Snake thing. Cast the Mech Titan Core. And cast the Masquid Nexus. Nature's Claim the Greater Good. And I think we're good after that. Just trying to wrap this game up. Like, we need to do, we need to take the steps we need to take to win, but I'm also not trying to ham it more than we need to. The problem is when you play like a low power kind of deck, it does just take a lot of game actions to actually be able to win. You can't just like cast one thing and be like, oh, everyone's dead now. Uh, we have a reliquary tower, so no max hand size. Saves us the time of having to discard. I don't know how D-Manny survived though. Uh, is it this thing? Oh, right. Elder Scale Worm. Uh, as long as you have seven or more life, damage that reduces to seven makes it seven. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep, could have beast within that. He's going to get another whack at it. He has eight cards this time, though, so we can get some things done. Uh, let's return the Wild Speaker. Oh, God, he's going to draw a ton of cards. Yep. Draw deck. Spinning Wheel Kick. Target creature you control deals damage. Uh, ooh, I'm going to lose three creatures. Which ones do we need? Uh, our commander we can just recast. That's fine. Frostfang, I'm actually fine with going down because I don't want to mill it. I have drawn myself to death with this card, so that one's fine. Uh, this one, eh, I'd like... Actually, I think I'm going to save that one. Oh, is he not attacking that one? Okay. Eh, that's fine. It happens. Oh, wait. No, he is shooting that one. Yeah, no, I, I want to save that one. Uh, to the bot. Uh, I don't think we need a Genesis wave. I just don't know that there's that much. I guess I could get the vehicles, but even then, I don't know if that's worth it. Uh, we're going to save this one. The lure effect seems very helpful for our current situation. Uh, two more weather light completed triggers. Man, this thing is solid. Jam this into all my, uh, high creature count decks. No tap symbol. I wonder if it fits in, uh, yeah, it probably doesn't fit in tap creature tribal. If it had a tap symbol, though, that'd be nice. There's a Sky Sovereign. Sky Sovereign's fun. Serac. Uh, d Manny sent an attacker into us, and I got distracted, so we just took a hit for 14. Whoops. d Manny's turn was kind of taking a while, so I checked my Twitter and was having a spirited debate with someone about a card, which, uh, pulled my attention away for a second. So there's a shot. There's a big shot in our life total. Don't know there's a lot of life gain in this deck. Uh, we need to make sure... Oh, the god, that's a world spine worm. That's a crazy card, right? We do need to, like, actually win on our next turn. Like, we're getting whittled down here, although I guess we could have prevented a lot of that last damage, but... Yeah, no. This game's gone on for a little while. Don't want to give opponents any more opportunity than they necessarily need. How big is this thing? 5-4. How many reach snakes? Brash Taunter is terrifying. Lurking Predator's land. He has Cultivate. Don't really need that. Uh, that's actually kind of an issue. Do need to make sure that opponent dies so they don't get a trigger off some big creature that we have. We got a 14 and a 3-3 three, three coming our way. Who's eating the 14? Uh, this thing makes a bunch of snakes, doesn't it? Each, uh, well, it has no counters on it, which seems like an issue. Hmm. Yeah, that's maybe not ideal then. Ah, oh, we just have some tokens we can throw in front here. Seems reasonable. Regenerates a golem, yep. Do need to recast our commander. We have some damage there. Uh, a bunch of triggers. Druid's repository. Because we need more mana in this moment. Uh, let's beast within the Elder Scale Worm before I forget. And then we'll activate the Masquid Nexus. Uh, opponent is a flying blocker. Gotta watch out for that. Yeah, this is the point where, like, we... Ooh, overrun helps. Overrun helps a lot. Uh, play this thing. Shoot something. I don't even know. Shoot Tago, I guess. Maybe just shoot the face. Just shoot the face. Oh, the creatures only. Shoot Tago. Uh, activate Mech Titan Core. 
Uh, exile. Uh, then cast Overrun. Oh, I forgot our commander. And get our commander. Regenerating some golems. Yep. Smuggler's copter. Turn this thing to our hand. I think that's enough. Let's go to combat. Enough is enough! I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane! Everybody strap in! What does this thing have? Flying haste lifelink trample. Okay. That basically kills flintlock. And then if we send the hex drinker, we should be good. Send this one. Where's the hex drinker at? And the hex drinker to flintlock. Everything else to D-Manny. And pray that everyone actually dies this time. Because we are tapped out. Our creatures are tapped out. There's not many creatures left in the deck. And uh, if this doesn't work, then we'll be in some trouble. Signing all the trample damage. Oh my god, D-Manny goes to negative 110. Well, we overkilled him a little. Uh, he blocked too. That'd be the trample in the... Giant snakes. I <laughs> uh, can't believe this worked, especially after the start we had. Oh, man. Things were looking terrible there for a minute. Uh, snakes on a plane. We got to do the thing. We cast a bunch of snakes and crewed some vehicles that fly. And uh, the flying is actually helpful, right? Because the ground got real clogged up in this game, and we just weren't getting that much damage through on the ground. And so, like, especially Mech Titan core late. Uh, super helpful to have. So, yeah, uh, you know, this game brought to you by Zendikar Resurgent, basically. Like, Zendikar Resurgent just still so, so strong. We would have lost this game easily without Zendikar Resurgent, so really kind of comes down to that. Seems like ages ago, but uh, Cadus was running away with the uh, OP blue card draw, Ristic Study and Mystic Remora early on, and, uh, and that made him the threat, which definitely gave us an opportunity to kind of get our stuff set up while everyone had to deal with him, so... Anyway, I uh, can't believe this deck actually worked. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next. Or if you want to get some good games on Spell Table, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.